Uh, good afternoon, my name is John O'Brien. I will be speaking to you for a few minutes about the topic of pulmonary tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, as you know in this country, is a huge problem. It is caused by a bug known as the Mycobacterium tuberculosis. There are a number of organisms within this Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, which include Mycobacterium tuberculosis and other mycobacteria, but this one is responsible for the vast majority of the disease we see. It is an infection that is usually spread by droplet spread, one person coughing the bug out and the next person inhaling it. This is what the organism looks like under a typical stain. We use a special stain called the Zeal Nielsen stain and this is an acid fast bacillus. It is spread by droplet nuclei and close contacts are at highest risk and transmission occurs from active disease and not with patients who do not have active disease but may have been infected by the organism. The likelihood that it will be transmitted to the next person depends on how infectious the person is and this relates to their disease burden and how much of, of lung disease they have with open cavities and how many bugs they are excreting, how closely they are exposed to other people at risk for getting the infection, how long they ex are exposed to those people, and how likely that particular organism is to infect the new host. So the risk factors include an exposure, anything that will impair your immunity, such as HIV, and there are other high-risk populations, homeless people, drug and alcohol abusers, people living in closed environments. However, what you must remember about tuberculosis is it's an infection like any other infection and anybody can get tuberculosis. You don't have to have any of these risk factors to get tuberculosis. And all you have to do is to live in this country to be at significantly high risk of getting tuberculosis. So when we look at it, we look at different stages of tuberculosis. Commonly, we see what is called latent tuberculosis where patients or subjects have obviously been exposed to the infection, but remember it's an infection like any other, so they've been exposed, the bug has been taken into their lungs, but they have reacted to it, and the infection has not progressed to disease. It may progress to disease, or it may remain latent and become reactivated at another point in person's life, or it may disseminate, and instead of spreading locally and causing progressive disease in one area of the body, disseminate and cause what we term miliary tuberculosis, which is a very severe systemic disease. This is a chest radiograph showing typical tuberculosis abnormality, and this is a long classification of tuberculosis varying from never being exposed and not being infected having been exposed but not been infected, having been infected but not progressed to disease, and it goes on, and number five will be TB suspected. So what I'm trying to get across is there's a whole spectrum of presentation of tuberculosis, and we've dealt with some of the likely factors that will cause people to progress with their TB. TB. The most common symptoms would be cough, weight loss, fever, night sweats, fatigue, Remember that a number have no symptoms and are often diagnosed on routine chest radiograph or follow-up of contacts. This is a slide from the CDC looking at prevention of TB spread, which is really not practical in this country. And the ideal situation, anyone who is suspected should be isolated. Uh, in reality, this can't happen. But we do our best to ensure that if we have a high suspicion of tuberculosis, those patients are separated as best they can from other people at risk, including health workers. HIV patients are more likely to develop tuberculosis and more likely to develop serious disease, and the diagnosis in these patients is often more challenging because their sputa have fewer organisms and they are likely to have extra pulmonary disease. 
risk of developing active TB disease is 7 to 10 percent per year for an HIV patient, which is quite high. And we are losing the battle against tuberculosis. We are seeing more and more tuberculosis. And what is most disappointing is the development of more and more resistant organisms, which are getting to the point of being untreatable. The treatment of standard tuberculosis includes a four-drug regime, which continues for two months, followed by a two-drug regime for four months. Non-adherence to treatment is a major problem and, and contributes to the development of resistant disease. And we like patients to have observed, directly observed therapy dot treatment to ensure they are adherent to their treatment and complete the course. Isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol are the standard drugs to be used. And as mentioned before, the problem we are now facing is that of multi-drug resistant. And beyond that, the XDR-TB. And most recently, a report has come out of India of a strain of tuberculosis that is resistant to every anti-tuberculous drug. Thank you.